guys, the most common cheat in Magic the Gathering is when people say that they have life totals or they uh, your life total is too low or their life total is too high. And the story I always go back to is the Mike Long versus, uh, I forget what his name, the two greatest cheaters in Magic the Gathering history. And the two people with the coach has supported, they have supported and put them out there, uh, Mike Long and the other dude, Mark Justice, I believe. Is it Mark Justice? But anyway, Mike Long was part of it. And it was just so crazy. He would change life totals all the time. He would knock people's dice over, so he could change his own life total when you're picking up their dice. And this is, you know, happened. Uh, it doesn't really happen with in notebooks if you're taking... Um, I always tell my opponent, hey, if they have a uh, phone they want to keep track of or a notebook, hey, I'm going to, you know, let you keep track of it and I just want to look at it. So that way that both people can understand, hey, these changes are being made and they can have the same system. But when two different people are keeping track of two different life totals, you have the potential for abuse. And this is probably, in my opinion, the most common, um, by far the most common type of cheating that is, um, that is involved is when they do that. And yeah, it's, it happens quite often and it could happen by mistake. But at the same time, when a person makes a lot of mistakes and every single time the mistake has favored them, you kind of pull back and say, huh, you know, maybe this person is intentionally trying to cheat. And a lot of times in uh, pre-release, I don't know why rampant cheating is so, I guess I understand. Pre-release, the prize support is a lot bigger. At my locals, it used to be you could win a box or two boxes if you won pre-release. So we would have all these um, unique players who we don't, who are not regulars at the shop and who do not play Friday Night Magic. And they would just show up from all over uh, Texas. And they would try to win this prize pool because we had a prize pool that was four packs per player. And if you have 100 players, the prize pool is 400 packs. And it's really top heavy. So I think first place gets 50% of those packs. Uh, it used to be um, three years ago when they were had you know 100 plus people at the pre-releases. It used to be you win pretty much um, close to a case in store credit, uh, and you can buy whatever you want with store credit. And there's a comic book store, so you can buy you know other stuff that's just not magic. Uh, so it used to be that you win like $500 at the pre-release, uh, $550. You could either choose a case or you can choose store credit. It didn't matter to the owners. Um, on top of the boost packs you would win. So we would get like a ton of people just cheating like crazy. I remember um, playing, uh, and I would never play the Friday night one. I would always play the Saturday one where it was less people. It was less people, but you know, for the most part, it was just very casual and the prize support wasn't for a pack. It was like two a pack or something. It was so the people who came out to that or the people who didn't want to be highly competitive at the pre-release. Uh, since that time, pre-release has gone way downhill for the store, mainly because then they get attracted to a lot of people. If you have a bad experience because you've been cheated, you're not going to go to the store again if that's your first experience with that store. Uh, first impressions do matter quite a bit. So, I mean, um, at the end of the day, that's probably most common cheat or the most common error is when someone's life total is not what it is. And you, a lot of times I would just be like, all right, whatever. And because it doesn't really matter in Magic because you're either overwhelmingly winning or you're going to lose. So it's pretty obvious from the board state and what has happened, transpired, transpired previously, what, um, who's going to win. But you do get the Mike Longs where it's they knock over your dice, you pick up your dice, and then their life total suddenly changes because you were not tracking their life total. And that's the problem. If you do not track your opponent's life total and you expect your opponent to track their own life total, you're going to get in trouble and you are going to get in trouble. Uh, so definitely something to watch out for. Anyway, bye guys.